This is how we make the moonshine. Morning, puss. How you doing? I'm all right. About quit, right? About quit, ain't it? I got some grain here. Molded grain. In the hills of eastern Tennessee, after developing a cost-saving system to malt their own grains, Mark and Digger double down on a triple malt liquor. Since we learned how to do this molding process with our molding table and the drying rack and stuff, we've been malting constantly. As soon as one grain would malt and dry, we immediately start another one running. Oh, that's pretty. That's molded barley right there, buddy. You know, I like that smell. Yeah, I've got more Dude, of all it. That sticky where that starch doesn't come out of it. So we got a lot of corn, barley, and rye that's already molded, dried, and ready to go. Ooh, rye, baby. Mm, that's nice, thing. Pretty. It's my understanding in the commercial market, single malt's all the rage right now. Me and old Digger's gonna do a triple malt. Well, we ain't gonna find out till we get over and get it ground up and make some ice. Honestly, it should be off the chain. You know, we may even get to lower our prices. We'd be national heroes well, in our customers' can... eyes. Celebrate a moonshiner for a change instead of trying to jail his eyes. <laughs> Malted grains are the most expensive grains, but with our new malting capabilities, we can do malted grains very efficiently, very cheaply. Our goal is to not gouge our customers. And this new malting process should enable us to do that. I'm gonna pull in here and get a little bit of fuel. I'll pump this high dollar gasoline, bad as I hate to. Oh, hell, David Robertson, detective. What's going on today, everybody? Well, pumping a little of this high dollar gasoline. Got to go get that feed ground up for them chickens. Oh, you care to step back a little bit while I talk to these guys? Yeah, no problem. Yep, you got it. Your buddy Mark out today. I'll see him. Hey, Mark, come on over here, buddy. What's going on, Captain? Look like he's into no good today, are you? No, sir, we're not. I'm going to tell you, boy, something. I might have been born at night, but I've been born damn last night. What's your grinders and everything here for? Got to grind up this scratch feed for them chickens. Propane tanks. I'm making liquor. Uh. <laughs> got anything in them buckets, sir? We got some corn, some barley we're gonna scratch up for them chickens, feed them. Yeah, there's a little rye grain in there. Oh, yeah, I forgot got about that. Got the stirring stick in there for it and everything, don't you? We're ready to go today. Oh, you know, I don't know what that is. I got that flea market. Been pretty hot out too, ain't it? Oh, yeah, it's yeah, real it's hot. Been it's about to get real damn hot, boys, so you better get ready for it. Damn. Oh, hell, let's get the hell out of here, you don't too. With all the run-ins that we've had with Detective Robertson, I'm a nervous wreck. I don't want to make another drop of liquor, but it's what we do. And that being said, we're going to go make this run of liquor. And hopefully this is going to be some of the best liquor that we've ever made, because it may be what sends us to penitentiary this time. He ain't going to give up, is he? No. He's a dog with a bone. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and mash in our triple malted grain. You know, Digger's Farm's three counties away from Cock County. And uh, Detective Robertson, he works for Cock County. We're on private property, so we feel good about it. And uh, we're going to mash in anyway and make a quality liquor, but at a fair price for our customers. I'm excited about this recipe, Puss, but I'm really a little bit... I'm leery. Nervous. You know, we're going to grain in very heavily. That's perfect, Hattie. And I mean, give, look that smell. Look how pretty that is. Yeah, boy. We're going to use two buckets of malted corn. Malted white corn. One and a quarter buckets of malted barley and three quarter bucket of uh, malted rye. Damn, that's going to make some real liquor. Be some finest liquor to ever been. You never know anything till it comes out of the steel. But with all this molded grains in it, it should have a hell of a punch, a lot of flavor. All right, let's put this energizer in there. Now that's just the damn caffeine for yeast. Kind of like dried up piss, I guess you'd say. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm going to tell you, Hattie, we don't know whether David Robertson's looking through his leaves right now, waiting on us to finish up. And we got to bring a steel over here. Yeah, we got 50 gallons of mash, so we're going to need a bigger steel to run it. The law knows every vehicle we drive. It's not that we're not well known, we're too well known. If we try to transport our steel, I mean, Detective Robertson is pulling up and talking to us at gas stations for no apparent reason, so we simply can't take this chance. So the obvious fact is we got to have someone else to do it for us. You think Jeff would haul it over here for us? I mean, he's in to us for part of our damn bounty. Nobody knows who he is. You know, Jeff, he's the farmer that's growing the corn for us at this point. How do you feel about 10% of that end yield? That'll be fine. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, brother. We're getting there fast. We are already in a business agreement with him, so if he wants to share in liquor, then it's time that he's going to have to share in some of the responsibility. I think farming it out to Jeff's the best idea. They know every one of our vehicles. Yep. None of these people knows Jeff. No. They don't know anything about what he drives. So what we're headed over here now to do is talk to Jeff, see if he'll be OK with hauling the liquor still across three counties and get it to the county where my farm's at. The law's not looking for Jeff, so he should slip through easy as pie. Yonder he is, Pess. Yep, he's out there tending to them, them cows. cows. Mm -hmm. He getting a head count. Well, they're nosy, ain't they? How you do, fellas? Hello there, Jeffrey. How are y'all? Well, we've been better, but been also been worse. Mark, how you doing? Good seeing you, buddy. Good seeing you, Bob. Uh, this ain't just by happenstance that we're over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this just ain't. This is a little serious. Explain to him, puss, the predicament uh, we're in. Well, we're kind of up a stump. We've got a guy that's in the sheriff's department over in our neck of the woods, and he's a dog with a bone with us. I mean, yeah. he will not let go. We've had two major interactions with him. To make your 15%, mm -hmm. we need a favor. Okay. We need you to come over and haul a steel over here for us. And we're just afraid to do it. I don't think we'd get a quarter of a mile, do you, Puss? I don't think we'd make it to city limits. So it's going to cost you another 5% is what you're saying, right? No. no. If we can't get it done, your percent, is it kind of favors that. You boys serious? That's a heart attack. Yeah, we're real serious. So what you're saying to haul an illegal piece of equipment through three counties without getting caught? Yep. Pretty much. You got the gist of it. Nobody over there, especially him, they don't have a clue who you are, what kind of vehicle you drive, you know. The law in our county don't know you. If we can't get that steel over here and run this liquor, they ain't none of us gonna have nothing. Sounds like a challenge to me. Good deal. I knew we could count Thank on you, him. big man. You're welcome. We'll send you the directions. It's a big load off of our shoulders because honestly, I don't think there's no way in hell that Digger and I could have got from point A to point B with this steel without this detective being all over us. <laughs>